fuel pickup is completely clogged. I don't know if there's a sock in there, but there must be some kind of sock. Either that or a piece of rust just got over. I hooked up my vacuum gun. And, uh, I mean, that shouldn't happen. That should just, we're down below the gas tank. It should siphon itself out. And it's just freaking. I mean, that's crazy. That's why I'm not getting any fuel. I started with this whole project because it had rotten ass gas in it. I knew that. So I I was going to drop the tank originally. And then I saw the rotten hoses and I didn't want to risk, you know, breaking them and not being able to replace them. But I got a fuel filler next solution. So, but anyway, I drained the tank and it ran and I made it two blocks and it sucked itself shut and died. And basically, the intake tube was completely plugged off. Like, I had to blow pressure through. I don't know what's on the bottom of this, but I had to blow pressure through it to get it to come back out. I was expecting to see some kind of removable sending unit up here. I could take off, clean it, whatever, a big hole. None of this stuff's removable. It's all permanent. I broke that nipple off, but I guess they're soldered on. I found out why this damn tank is so bad. Anyway. Oh, okay, I can get that angle. See it inside of there? I don't know what the... I don't know what all that black shit is, but there's... Look at that rust chunks in there. I don't know if this tank's even salvageable. It's got like some kind of rust slash varnished fuel kind of like slurry going on. Some people use cleaning solution. Some people use nuts and bolts. Some people use pebbles. I like something with a little bit more of an edge on it. So I think I'm going to use box these self tappers and I'm going to combine it with it, this toilet cleaner because it's the only toilet cleaner I had that had it has a warning for being corrosive. So we're going to give this a go, slamming some Lysol in there and some water. And I've got this. I'm going to do that and we're just going to shake the shit out of it, roll it around. And I've got some uh, vacuum cover or vacuum line caps. Cap those off. Some will leak out there, but way she goes this might all be a huge waste of time we're gonna kind of Ooh, what the hell i thought it would i thought it'd squirt more than that Just remove the cap we're gonna go hopefully these aren't too hard to extract you see i started looking with my eyes and then i'm not pointing this thing anymore i don't think you need a lot of water just want enough so it sloshes good because we're going to turn it around upside down so i don't want it so heavy that you can't give it a good shake Let's see if we're making any progress at all tank man made a little progress still a thick layer in there wish i had a big ass sh shaker i just set this thing on it hook this thing up and let her go maybe set it on top of a harley it's definitely breaking rust loose i just after looking at this tank uh, closer I decided it's actually mostly varnish I've got some non acetone nail polish and I've got a whole can of acetone I think we'll try this first just to see what happens but first we've got to dump that shit out of there and see the see the clean tank underneath that that's just see where I've broken it loose in spots the tanks actually pretty damn good I think it's just got rust here near the top where the gas wasn't but, like, that's all varnish. Let's give this stuff a go first. I still got the, the screws and nuts in there. I'll probably shake it around and then I'm gonna let it sit for a while and then I'll shake it around and let it sit for a while. had five gallons of E85 and acetone in here and I left it shaking from the tree in the wind all day. We're gonna dump that out and it's done pretty good. I 
<laughs> hooked this up. I tied, it's really windy today. So I tied this to a tree from a rope and then I hooked up a tarp to it as a parachute to pull it and keep it sloshing all day. And you know, I don't know how much of that progress down there I can attribute to that and how much I can attribute to just the E85 eating it up, but the combo worked. Pretty pleased with that. I happen to have an afterthought. I'm like, I blow through that tube and it still seems a little restricted. I like, I want this tube clear. I don't want it clogging up. If I uh, have to change a couple filters, that's okay. But if this clogs up, the tank has to come down again. So I just fed this, I think it's picture hanging wire or whatever number in there all the way to the bottom a few times and drag it back out. And it definitely, it has some shit in it. So I'm gonna keep going blow through it and run some liquid through it. I got most of the varnish out. Sprayed her down with some rust conversion. I'm getting ready to slap her back on and we're gonna send her all away. This one's not great. You see it's really grungy. So I sprayed a little bit of Clorox spray on there. Let's see if we can shine this up a little bit. Still looks grungy as fuck. I decided to switch up methods. I got some saw scrub. It's got a little bit of grit to it. The old lady's power brush on my drill. I mean, I think this was an ugly seat when it was new, but. Kind of get it spread around first. What, rag here? You can see the clear dirt line there. It at least got the grunge off. It's definitely not perfect, but. I don't know how much better it can get. Fix the spring, throw a seat cover on it. Yeah, because there's a couple springs underneath that are broken, but that's not bad. Considering how grungy it was when I started. You can see those springs are missing. They're right here. All three of them are broken. They're just a bit short, you know, of making it. They broke right up next to the L. Somebody with a big old ass must have set in there. I'm going to cut this off to where it's straight. I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to stretch it. It's not a perfect solution, but, you know, it should be okay. We'll do a test with this one before we mess with the others. Wait a second. This is going to be hooked the wrong way, isn't it? Oh, we can make it work anyway. Man, that is not one of There's little tabs in there. There. Oh, shit, you still can't see it. Little tabs there. See how it's a backer? It holds it in. It locks it in. And since this one is one rung off, it's going the wrong way. Obviously, the best way to rig some up would be to fix this with right spring. Second best, take the upholstery off and do something there. Drill a hole, put a bolt through there, and that'd be a backer. Before we get too jazzed up, let's see how this fits. Might be so tight that it will push up on my ass. It is a spring, so it will be tighter. I see how it's tighter. I think it'll, it might feel a little funny on the butt. We'll see. I think that'll work. I mean, there might, it's going to push up a little more right there, but shit, that'll be fine. Get a little bolt, and it'll just, it'll just be the head against that. We'll poke it through this way and put a nut right there. And yeah, I don't know why that won't work. <laughs> this is what I decided on to hold that spring in. I'm going to put it in this way with the head up and then I can get an Allen wrench on there and tighten it down. And this will butt against the spring right like that. Keep it from slipping out. Make sure that's where's my actual hammer at. Automatic punch is pretty handy when it actually works. Oh, I was afraid of that. I don't think I went clear through the seat though. Perfect. Almost got a little bit close with the nut though. Mint. I'm gonna keep it from backing out. And I'm just gonna repeat that two more times. So I got all the springs in. Got the stops mounted. That one down there. That one down there was tricky. As you can see there, with, I kind of had to go in sideways with the drill, but we got her done. I think it's actually gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this slide out and lube it up before I strap it back on. 
I gotta reclip these wires so the upholstery is not flapping in the breeze. We'll have to take a sit on it and see for sure, but I think it's gonna be good to go. I kind of went for a ride in this and the freaking wires, I mean, it feels like your back's just sitting on wires. This seat was not, I don't know if there used to be more of that sh in between, they probably did. But I mean, it's just like, you're sitting on these wires. It's terrible. It freaking hurts. That one's right in your spine. Couldn't take this back off. Two bolts here. The seat comes out almost just as easy. It's four bolts. I think I'll just take those loose and mess with the back for now. Do a little ghetto upholstery work. Pretty much these two bolts come out and that top, the uh, whole top comes off. We're gonna try to pull off the cover. And these are just like little rings, which I don't have. I think you just, they, they probably come like this. You slip them on and pitch them over, but I think you use this picture hanging wire to go back. All the ones that are accessible here. Oh yeah, f it. Oh yeah, look at that. We'll have this off in no time. I got all the dirty rings off. There's a, uh, you can see them here. There's more wires. First of all, I think if I put this pad on there, I'm no upholstery guy. I'm not even qualified to look at this. Th there's a wire in the seat and that's what's attached. And that's that's what's hurting my back. Like, what the hell were they thinking there? So I'm gonna try to take that wire out. Got the cover off. Here's the magnificent foam. Foam is just like, it's just like paper thin. And you can see right here, that's where the wires are, right on the back of your spine. I got a piece of foam there on a the roof. We're gonna measure this and I'm gonna pretty much just cut out a chunk, slam her on there and uh, we'll delude ourselves into thinking I can get that cover back over it somehow. I think I'm gonna use some of these. gauge fixed gas tanks flushed and we're gonna try to make it around the block without having something break well I know you guys can't see very much but oh shit I was just gonna say she's driving good she definitely needs some carb work she was running like a little spitfire oh she as soon as I get the phone out it's like nope I'm running like shit, dude. I don't know if it's still getting fuel starved or what's going on there. I'll have to check the filter and stuff. Because it runs really good for. See, it wasn't even sputtering earlier. I don't know what the f that's all about. It's either running out of fuel or. That almost seems ignition related. I bet my points. I bet I. I bet I zip those points up, and she'll. Cause God, that's too jerky to be fuel, man. Or maybe it is fuel. Maybe the accelerator pumps what's. I don't know. Maybe that is fuel, but the brake is fucked up. Something on my. Uh, Something is locking up that that passenger side brake. I'm gonna have to take it apart, see what the is going on in there. I might have metal on metal or something. I got new brake equipment and stuff to build the front brakes. I just, oh yeah, she's she's fucking sketch. She just grabs to that right side, bud. But she is kind of running, and I made it around the block. I got the speedometer working. I got the heat gauge working. I got the the fuel gauge working. Blinkers are working. Lights are working. Well, I think we got the fuel issue mostly sorted. I drove around the block. I think I made about three laps last night. She's actually running on off, really. It run good, and then just, I think my first suspect is points, the ignition points. I'm gonna check those, uh, see how bad they look. I've got a new set ready to go, but if they're good enough, I'll 
fix them up and keep using them. I think it's points, but the main thing is when I hit the brakes, even just barely, this side just locks up immediately, which is really dangerous. Jerks the wheel out of your hand, pulls to the right. So we're gonna dive into the front brakes. I've got new pads, new rotors, uh, new wheel cylinder all ready to go. So we're gonna at least repair that on both sides. And then if we have time tonight, we'll get to the ignition and hopefully be able to drive this thing down the highway tomorrow.